tag says Kristen Hicks, but um, I think I'm sharing her link or something, however that works. But I'm Anita Jenkins, the Director of Neighborhood Services for the Riviera Beach Community Redevelopment Agency. And I also wear another hat and that I am the Executive Director of our nonprofit, the Riviera Beach Community Development Corporation, which is a tax exempt nonprofit organization. Uh, we are inviting you to this Realtor Opportunities informational session because we think we have some interesting opportunities um, here in our city and so many exciting things are happening. I see a few of you on the call who um, uh, responded to an RFP a couple years ago and because the program did not move ahead as quickly as we'd liked, uh, some of this may be um, sort of redundant, but I think the opportunities will not. You could see from this cover slide from the beautiful murals to our award-winning garden, to our award-winning clean and safe program, to our beautiful event center, that there are some great things happening in the city. All of those things are award-winning. They are spectacular. And uh, the things that are planned for the city are just mind boggling. And we wanna share some of that with you from the community development perspective. I'm here on the call. We have Ms. Kristen Hicks, who is our marketing uh, manager here at the CRA and for the CDC. And you'll be getting uh, various things. And I'll talk more about that at the end from her. On the call, you see Manoka Nugent, who is our senior um, project administrator, who works very closely uh, with the CDC as a project manager, and she'll be a contact for a number of you, and I'm here. Um, with the contact information that you received for our, our emails, you could always reach out to Kristen if, you don't, uh, if you're not able to access my email or phone number or Minoka's, but we're here to answer questions, to be supportive, and to hopefully uh, create a partnership with you. I see that there are a number of realtors who are on the line or, or some of you. So um, you're in, I think, for some surprising activity. We know that in Palm Beach County, it is very challenging for affordable workforce housing for people not only to find a housing that is available, but also to be able to identify subsidy or down payment assistance if needed. And because our commission has been uh, very um, forward thinking, uh, we've created a couple of programs that we think will get us a little bit down the road in terms of uh, getting something started here in the city and there is more to come. So next slide. Uh, the purpose of this session is to introduce those two programs to you to show you some of the real estate opportunities we have and to also uh, talk about how we follow up with each of you, not only for, for things that I'm sharing with the CRA, with the CDC, and we know uh, there are some things that we're not able to talk about today that are also coming forward in our city. So we want you to be informed. Uh, we want you to bring the best that you have, your professionalism, your contacts, and be able to make sure that our programs are successful. Next slide, please. Um, like I said, these are gonna be various opportunities and projects. And I don't mind if you stop me and ask questions. I did allow time for Q&A at the end. And at each section, I'll stop and see if there are any questions. Uh, feel free to put them in the chat box. Kristen will um, let me know when there's something there and I'll try to respond in real time to those questions. Next slide. Uh, the first program that I wanna preview is the Riviera Beach Renaissance Program. The Riviera Beach Renaissance Program um, is our program to provide down payment and housing rehabilitation assistance for first time home buyers for single family homes within the CRA. We did not include a map of the CRA area, but I would encourage you to go to the CRA's website at www.rbcra.com. And um, I think the first pull down menu has our map. 
and you could see the outline compared to the rest of the city to see where the boundaries are. When I present some of the projects we're working on for the CDC, most of them are in the CRA. Well, some of them are, and we also have quite a few that are outside of the CRA, but within the city. If you have uh, buyers or they have property that's not our property, but they're looking for down payment assistance and um, they meet our criteria, you could always uh, type in the address of the property on our map and it will locate it and you'll see whether it's in the CRA or not. Uh, as part of this program, home buyers can make exterior and interior improvements to their home. These eligible improvements include painting, kitchens, bathrooms, plumbing, landscaping, weatherization, and these are for impact windows and doors, air conditioning or heating, roof repair or replacement, and other repairs necessary to correct health, safety, and code violations. The dollars that we have are available for applicants on a first come, first serve, first ready basis. Next slide. Here um, are the underwriting criteria and based on the funding that has been approved for this fiscal year, which I haven't spent any of it yet, I have um, a couple of preliminary requests but I haven't spent anything, we expect to assist 15 to 20 households for the remainder of this fiscal year. The maximum funding is up to $35,000 based on a sliding AMI scale for down payment, closing costs, and rehab assistance. The incomes can go up to 120% AMI, uh, is for owner occupied. And don't worry if you're not taking notes. Um, I don't mind if we share these slides with you so you'll have the information in front of you. Kristen can make that happen. Priority will be given to homes with documented health, safety, or code violations. And it's for one unit single family homes. And as I said, the down payment assistance is within the CRA. Our funding terms are 25 years, forgivable at a rate of 5% a year after the first five years. If you've worked with programs with the county, with the city of West Palm, with Delray Beach, then sometimes, depending upon the source of money, their restrictive terms are more than 25 years. I think the county has 30 years. Um, there is no interest and a requirement is that the buyer puts down at least 3% minimum, wherein at least 1% must be the buyer's own funds. So that means they can get the remainder from a gift or other subsidy at the discretion of the executive director of the CRA. Next slide. Uh, ratios, front and back end ratio at 35 and 40%. Lender criteria, um, the lender uh, can require their, their regular credit standards. The lender must be an approved lender. Um, we just did a lender presentation an hour or so ago, and we have lenders who will be, be, be participating in our program. If you're working with lenders uh, who are not on our approved list, then contact us so we could see about getting them approved. We're not closing the door to lenders who have good product. Uh, the CRA is not responsible for the selection of a lender and the lender decisions are final. So if uh, there's a um, commercial lender where uh, they have denied um, mortgage eligibility to someone, then that's the first thing that they need to do is pre-qualify for a mortgage. The buyer must attend at least an eight hour approved home buyer education course, and they have to have counseling through our home buyers club. So I get calls, two and three calls at least a day from people who are interested in home ownership. And I talk with them, hear where they are, uh, in the process, and I always refer them to our homebuyers club 
to get started. If they're ready to buy a home, then it'll be a quick process in the Home Buyers Club. But usually people think they're ready, but they are not, they've not gotten a prequal, they don't have the down payment, et cetera, or they don't have enough income. They may see a house that they like, but it's not affordable to them. So uh, we try to uh, help with that so that when they're looking for a home, they know exactly what they're eligible for in terms of subsidy and what they pre-qualify for in a first mortgage. And they know how much cash they have of their own money. The subsidy is provided in the form of a second mortgage is gap financing. Um, we, don't, we don't intend to have any loan origination fees that we charge. And if someone have, has assets in excess of 35,000, we uh, require that they spend some of their own assets. To give you an example, uh, a few years ago, I had a low income buyer, uh, someone who was receiving uh, transfer payments, social security. This person had a dream of home ownership and qualified for a small mortgage. She thought the mortgage she qualified for was too much. And she didn't want a mortgage. She really didn't want a, a mortgage. She wanted us to provide subsidy. And uh, this was through the CRA and, and the county's program. And um, we had found, the CDC had found what we thought was an affordable house with the small amount that she, um, that she qualified for. We tried to explain to her over and over about taxes and insurance that she had had to pay those. And that was actually more than the mortgage. She had in excess of $250,000 in the bank and did not want to spend any of her own money. So um, that was not a good deal. Next slide. Oh, let me just say, not that people cannot have assets, but um, that is something that we want to look at to leverage our money as much as possible. Um, we also have our special initiatives program. And this is a title for special types of projects where the CRA will require vacant, derelict, or donated properties to be developed in partnership with another developer. And this is through a negotiated development agreement that meets the goals of the CRA. Under this program, the CRA may contribute project and subsidy funds to be used for development and purchase subsidy. The properties must be within the CRA. And if a buyer is not a first time home buyer, the buyer must live in the house as their primary residents with the same restrictive covenant as subsidized buyers. Now, this is exciting because we could attract um, almost market rate home buyers. They might have owned a house somewhere else, but des desire to move into our city. So next slide. Uh, here um, is the underwriting criteria. Uh, we have maximum funding for development and home buyer subsidy up to an average of $100,000 per unit. We can go up to 150% AMI and the subsidy will be provided on a sliding scale. And I would think somebody at 150% AMI would not need any home buyer subsidy um, or very little. It must be owner occupied. Again, they're the property conditions. Uh, we can use it for mixed use, mixed type housing and for ownership. Must be within the CRA boundaries. Here are the same funding terms as the previous program. Next slide. And they have to also be part of the Home Buyers Club. Uh, the subsidy is provided in the form of a second mortgage is gap financing uh, and where it in with assets in excess of 35,000, they have to decrease them uh, through additional home buyer contributions. 
So next slide. Now I want to talk about the CRA's partners projects. And remember that I said that I'm talking about the CDC, but there are other potential projects in the CRA that we hope uh, you might be interested in participating in. But today we're going to talk about the CDC. Next slide. But let me stop and see if there are any questions about the two programs and the underwriting criteria. Any questions so far? I have one. Sure. The maximum amount of money that an individual can get, let's say for instance, they're looking to purchase a $300,000 home. Um, are you saying that they will, they can only qualify up to 100,000 towards the 300,000? Well, if it's a $300,000 home in the CRA, uh, I'm gonna talk about this special initiatives project where they can get up to 100,000. Otherwise, the maximum someone can get in the CRA is 35,000 in that case. So that means they'd have to qualify for 265,000 or a little bit less because they'll have 3% of their own money. Um, so, well, next. Sure. Question. And it's more so uh, regarding the boundaries. Where am I able to see exactly where the boundaries are located? Is that listed? Yes. If you go to the CRA's website at www dot rbcra.com, then uh, there is a tab on the front page where you could click on for the map and it shows the section, it's highlighted, that's the CRA. If you are trying to sell a property or locate a property for someone, you're not sure if it's in or out of the CRA, there's a little box where you can insert the address, click it, and it will locate the property and show you it. Is it in the highlighted area or not? Kristen, you. maybe you could put our web um, address in the chat box for me. Um, or Minoka, if you could do it since Kristen is doing the slides. Uh, next slide. Uh, this is our 11th Street townhouse project, which falls under the special initiatives. And uh, this will be 12 Dutch Caribbean style townhomes that we're projecting that the uh, cost slash price will be from 275 to about 330, a little bit more three bedrooms, two and a half baths. Uh, the three-story units have two car garages. The two-story units have a one car garage. Beautiful project. And this project is a block and a half from the water. And uh, we estimate that from the third floor, you can see the water from there. Um, it'll be walkable, there'll be sidewalks. Um, it'll have an urban feel to it. And I'll talk a little bit about the second phase of this project in a minute. But we're um, in pre-development and pre-site plan application for 12 townhomes on this site. So as a realtor, wouldn't you wanna sell some of these units for us? Oh, we've only shown, talked about this project and we already have two prospects. We haven't signed a contract. We have two people who are interested in the units. Next slide. Here is the uh, elevation showing how the units will look uh, from the street. A location map, the project is at the intersection of 11th Street and Avenue E. You could see the uh, Google map and see how close it is to the water. Literally, you can bike to the water, walk to the water, et cetera. And I said a block and a half because once you go a block and a half, you're in the marina. You're actually in the marina. Okay, next slide. Here uh, are the, um, the elements uh, for the project. 
we know on the site it will be 12 townhomes because we made them larger. You see our price target. They are targeted for workforce projects. They're near job centers, near Rybovich, Viking, et cetera. Uh, down payment assistance is available for qualified buyers. We're doing affirmative marketing. Uh, I mentioned it three, two and a half in, um, with garages, three and two stories with an attractive design, security, energy efficient. We will have an HOA. We're not sure of the amount of the HOA, but because there's not a gate or security person, uh, that reduces the HOA, which is going to cover the landscaping and reserves, you know, for repairs to the building or something. Um, and you see the square footage uh, without the garages. So I think with the two car garage with the, with the three story, it's like 2,100, 2,200 square feet. So they're very nice, beautiful units. Uh, next slide. Here are the vacant parcels that we've assembled for this project. Uh, and you see the addresses on 11th Street if you want to pull them up. The building that's shown here, we have already demolished it. And the site is ready for um, uh, site work as soon as we're able to, to close. Um, next slide. Here is the floor plan for the three-story units, which uh, is a very attractive design where you know there's bathroom on uh, both floors. And actually on the third floor, there are two bathrooms up there. Next slide. Here's the floor plan for the two-story units. Uh, all of them have washer dryer connection. You see the garage, uh, et cetera, and uh, the bedrooms. And there are balconies on, um, in some of the areas. You see the balconies that are there. Uh, next slide. Uh, here's the site plan. You see that there, the um, section that's uh, identified as alley is the rear entry for the townhomes where you drive into your unit. Um, the front is walkable with sidewalk. There, there are wide public uh, right-of-ways with green space in front. Uh, there is on-street parking. And this project um, is just to the south of phase two of this project where we'll be doing about 46 apartments and condos and um, commercial retail um, just to the north of this, uh, which will have a complementary design, which is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, next slide. Uh, here are some other infill parcels at 928 West 7th Street, the CDC owns that. Uh, we just received our permit on Friday. This will be a solar home, a two bedroom, two bath solar home, the first one in the city. And I'm looking for a buyer for that. Uh, it will be affordable. It is within the CRA. So the person will be eligible for up to 35,000 in down payment assistance for that house. The next home, 1052 West 30th Street is a house donated by the city and it was, uh, nobody's ever lived in it. Construction was started, uh, but not completed. So we're gonna complete it, update it, uh, lush landscaping. This will be for sale. And we are hoping to make this very affordable. And because it is outside of the CRA, the CDC from its own funds can provide from five to $10,000 in down payment assistance. The next lot at 2923 is another site owned by the CDC where a larger home could be built. And we could provide some modest down payment assistance of $5,000, but uh, someone would have to uh, uh, income qualify pretty much for this one. But the lot is an oversized lot on Avenue J and it's a block and a half from the city hall campus it's a block west of Inlet Grove High School. And uh, they're talking about rebuilding a new high school at that site and some adjacent property that the school board owns. 
and it's down the street from another project I'm going to tell you about that will be a new project on the same street. Um, next slide, looking for buyers fall three. Uh, the next project is also on Avenue J at 3201, 3211 Avenue J. It's an existing townhouse site that a previous developer has started about 10 years ago. And you see four townhomes there where we have, the CDC has tenants in there now, but it is our intent to demolish those units and we are going to build 28 new three bedroom, two bath, um, uh, two bedroom, two bath units. They will not have garages, but they will be very attractive and affordable townhouse projects. We've already received a home grant from the county and we're in the process of receiving a grant from the city uh, for this project. And we hope to be able to offer some down payment assistance with this next slide. Here is um, a digital image of the community and it's called Villas of Solano. Next slide. Another image of the townhouses with the balconies and uh, there's an island in the kitchen and uh, has a little backyard area. That's very nice. Next slide. An overall site plan with the tot lot and barbecue area, the retention area will be designed to be an uh, attractive uh, water feature. We have a uh, visitor parking and uh, the sort of sidewalks are built as a walking trail through the community. Next slide. Uh, here is the massing for the project, showing you the different size units. And uh, the next few slides will be infill lots uh, in the CRA uh, where we will build new homes that will be eligible for the down payment assistance. We have um, this lot at 17th and Avenue F. Next slide. There's an, go back one. Uh, you see the adjacent lot behind it that's available uh, to build a house on. And we already have one or two people who've given us a letter of interest for a new home there. Next slide. In the same neighborhood, uh, there is a lot at Avenue F and 12th Street. And if you're familiar with the new homes the CDC built a few years ago, there are four new homes uh, at the end of this block that were built. This will be a new home. Next slide. Across the street, another new home. Next slide. And adjacent to that, a third new home. And these are all across the street from the Boys and Girls Club and about uh, an hour, not an hour, what am I saying? About a um, block and a half from the water. Next slide. And that is my presentation. I will stop and see if you have questions, if we can discuss things, and then I'll close out by telling you next steps with this group. Any questions? You all are very quiet. Don't you want to know how you can work with us? And okay, so how, how can we work meet, with you? How do you meet the buyers? And how do we meet the buyers? <laughs> I actually have a question regarding the second project that you uh, discussed. Do you have like a tentative date for completion for like the townhouse project? For the 11th Street or for yeah. Villas of Solano? For, for the 11th Street and also um, Villas of Solano? We think that we will be able to break ground on Villa, on 11th Street project next January or February. Mm -hmm. But I would like to, before I come out of the ground, I wanna pre-sell those units, pre-construction pricing. 
for okay. the units. For um, Villas of Solano, um, maybe a couple of months after that, uh, breaking ground maybe 12 um, months from now, because we still have to go through the site plan approval process. And because uh, we're getting subsidy from a couple of places that moves a little slower, but I want to have um, pre-construction sales on them. Okay. So um, once I get everything approved, site plan is moving along, I want to have some uh, open house renderings, mm -hmm. idea board set up, a sales center. I want, when I break ground, I want to have all those units sold with uh, backup contracts on them. Okay. How do okay. we get, how do we get slides, these slides that you presented and also additional information for uh, clients that might be interested in those properties that are being built in the future. Right. So we'll be able to share that. And like I said, the first point of entry for a client is because we have people who've been waiting in our home buyers club, send them to us. We'll enroll them in our home buyers club where uh, the first class is, is it this week, Monoka? Yes. The first class is this week, but they can enter later. And we're doing uh, several rounds of, of these sessions um, throughout the year. So if you have somebody who comes to you next month, just call us, we get them enrolled, get them started in the process so they can be assessed, et cetera. Okay. People wanna buy homes, not everybody will qualify. So. Uh, let's get started. We want we want to know that people have they are informed home buyers. Uh, we're making it convenient for them right now. We are doing virtual classes, but uh, once we go back to in person, we meet at our um, ambassador center on Singer Island. Um, so we're interested in selling those. We did a bus tour a couple of weeks ago and it was very successful. And we took letters of interest from people on the bus who had been pre-qualified, showed them all of this, and they told us which of the properties they were interested in. And remember I said, first come, first serve, first ready. Out of the bus tour, we already have two contracts where we're moving forward. And there are a couple others that we're waiting on their prequal there um, from the lenders and uh, we're moving ahead with them. So um, it's been going pretty well because people can't get subsidy and they can't find properties and prices are going up. Um, how can you work with us? We have an agreement which after this call in a couple of days, uh, Kristen will send out a simple survey. Um, name of your company, uh, your name, how to contact you. Um, if you're interested in working on infill projects, on the townhouse projects, et cetera. Then uh, we have, we'll ask you what is your negotiated um, realtor commission because keep in mind, this is affordable housing. So we want to know, you know, sort of what the number is. This, these are not market rate uh, projects. And once you provide that to us, then we'll have our list of realtor partners that we'll move ahead with. Um, we may ask if you would come and present to our home buyers club, you know, let them see. Because people, even though we have product in Riviera Beach and we want everybody to buy, People are not necessarily, there are some people who want to buy in West Palm or North Palm. Right. And uh, we want them to have contact with good realtor partners, good lender partners. We're not telling them who to work with. Um, we do anticipate that for the townhouse projects, we will have a special marketing Ooh. effort with our realtor partners, you know, setting up a sales center. As people come in, you're rotating with the clients as they come in. So you have somebody you're working with, but there is an opportunity for realtors to get some business out of the project like you would on any other development. And then um, as you get to know us, there may be property in the CRA 
or the city, if you give us a call, where it's not something that the CDC or CRA owns, that you have a buyer who may need some assistance. Call me on those as well. And let's see if we can partner. Okay. okay. Sounds good. Uh, so there, there is opportunity. And then I can't talk about the particular projects, but the CRA and the city have some major initiatives moving forward that the more you are in tune with what's happening in the city, the better the opportunity for you is. Okay. So that's, that's good to hear. So for the home buyers um, workshop, if we send clients over, do you all assist with like the pre-approval? And if they receive the pre-approval, they have the liberty to purchase wherever. It's not just restricted to the CRA. Is that correct? Well, uh, the way it would work is they go through the um, Riviera Beach Home Buyers Club. Uh, they um, get an uh, appointment for a counseling session. The counselor would do, um, I call it the back of the envelope pre-approval. Mm -hmm. Then depending upon how ready they are, somebody, they have a good credit score, they have their money saved, and they say, well, I make this amount and I know I'm ready to go. I want to buy in West Palm or whatever. The partner we work with, with the Home Buyers Club works all over the county. Got it. So okay. if they're, um, you're working with somebody who wants to buy in Riviera Beach, then, I mean, in West Palm Beach, then um, we do affirmative marketing. You know, you can't, we're not saying you can't participate or get the information. And we demand that you buy in Riviera Beach. We don't, we don't do that. We, okay. we want to sell our city. We know that it's a great opportunity, but not everybody, you know, wants to live here. They may work someplace else, you know, and want to be close to work or where their kids go to school. We understand that. We want successful home buyers. Okay. That's the ultimate goal. Must they currently be residents of Riviera Beach to be eligible? They just, um, they either have to be a resident or they desire to live in Riviera Beach because why should we do all the hard work for West Palm Beach? Right. You know, but we have other partners and I'm honest with people. You say, well, I like what you're doing, but I saw something in West Palm. I have nonprofits we work with or somebody with the city we can refer them to mm. who are doing good work as well okay. and vice versa. Other questions? So we'll send a um, sample questionnaire or, or scope questions to you. If you respond to us, we'll go the next step with you individually. And uh, if you have questions about what we are sharing, um, let us know. I would also encourage you to just go to our website. If you are not part of our contact list, there is a pop-up that says, if you want more information about what's happening in, this, in the CRA, you fill out your name, your contact information, you'll get our constant contact. When there are solicitations, you get information. Uh, you get notice about meetings, events, and it's a good way to keep up. You don't have to read everything, but it's a good way for you to keep up with the pulse of the city. And I'm telling you, Nobody else in Palm Beach County is doing what we're doing. We have at the marina, we have um, professional artists exhibit. We've been doing that all year from uh, Black History Month to Women's History Month. We, we are honoring Earth Day with landscape exhibit with very well-known and lesser known artists. It is absolutely gorgeous and it's free. You know, people can go, um, get a glass of wine at Rafiki Tiki and look at the exhibit, just stroll through. Uh, in a few weeks, we're gonna have a night of jazz and um, um, what is it, Kristen? Um, so it's a night of jazz with DOS um, craft beer and wine um, is going to be one of our partners. And it's also, um, we're gonna have some paella station um, and this event is amazing, but 
Great news, Anita. It sold out this weekend. With, uh, we've had to increase the number. So we'll look and see what our capacity is. And we may add a few more tickets. But I'm looking at Miss Tracy Sims. I know she likes these sort of things. And you would enjoy yes, I do, and I would love to be there. <laughs> up on the rooftop, you know, so you could say, oh, this is cool. I need to be living in Riviera Beach. So that's coming. We're partnering with the Palm Beach Cultural Council and they're doing a taste of art. If you've heard of their mosaic stuff that they're doing and it's mobile um, opportunities for arts all around Palm Beach County, they're coming to Riviera Beach for the first time. And we have a musician who will be performing for free out by the water, by the boats and Ballet Florida is coming and doing a teaser dance. You have to pay a fortune to go see Ballet Florida at the Kravitz Center, but it's gonna be free at our marina. Uh, we have, we're doing a Moby mat installation at our man-made beach right at the Intracoastal at the marina. There are very few of them in Palm Beach County. So if you have clients with who are physically challenged, hey, move to Riviera Beach. You can participate, you can get in the ocean, you can get in the water and this stuff is free. Um, what else are we doing? We're sponsoring a countywide Juneteenth festival on Juneteenth, on June 19th at our marina. We had a, a national poetry uh, day with an international poetry star last month. It's so much stuff happening. We're doing a master plan for our parks, just world-class parks. Um, let me think of something else. We're uh, continuing our underground burial of utility lines along Broadway, which looks beautiful. Uh, we're redeveloping some major sites that the city and CRA own, where we'll have these mixed use buildings. And five years from now, you'll be calling me saying, Anita, I should have listened to you and moved to Riviera Beach plus sell some of those properties and encourage my clients to come to the city. I guarantee you, not even five years, three years from now. I guarantee you, it is very, I live here. I live here and I love it. So that's my commercial. Um, we look forward to working with you all. We want you to be successful. We want you to sell some homes. Mm -hmm. If you have a situation, call us, email us, look forward to the uh, survey and uh, we look forward to doing some business. If you see our annual report, which is posted on our website, Riviera Beach is open for business. So if you have business and commercial clients, call me. We have programs for that too. That's a whole nother seminar uh, that I can do. We are open for business. Any other questions? I actually have a question off sure. of that. Um, are there opportunities for small business investors? You mentioned that a little bit on the commercial end. Um, is there something that you can share with us? That it depends on what you mean by investors. If you're looking for something where somebody's trying to, trying to crowdfund or you have some friends who want to open a coffee shop, yeah, yeah, there is opportunity. Uh, your realtors, if you find a location within our CRA, uh, we have a um, commercial facade grant where we'll provide a four to one match up to $40,000 on a grant, you put in 10,000. We have a landscaping grant up to $4,000. On the street, we have a solicitation for a signage grant. And uh, what is the other grant, Kristen? I'm, I'm missing one for small businesses. Uh, we did an incubator business um, in the old Dairy Bell, the iconic Dairy Bell, the oldest, the site of the oldest business or first business in the city. And uh, Miss Ashley Nicole has started Smoothie Me Please, which is just doing phenomenally well. That was our first incubator business. And I can't talk about it right now because it's not definite, but we're working on our second incubator business where uh, within that business, there will be a couple of opportunities for small businesses to co-locate right on Blue Heron. 
okay. uh, near Broadway. Um, we're about to take down the old um, Bank Atlantic building that was BB&T. We were going to move our offices there and rehab it, but the costs are prohibitive. So we're taking it down and we'll be looking for partners to do a P3 for um, a multi-story mixed use facility right there. So there's, there's stuff to come um, in other areas. So give me a call if, if you're interested or you see something. We are open for business. So Thank talk you. to me. Any other questions? You all have been very kind, very attentive. Thank you for your professionalism, your interest. And we look forward to following up with you. You can reach out to me, to Kristen, to Manoka. We thank you and have a good rest of the day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, so thank you, Carl.